Ugh. it's a new video uh, i got new haircut as you can see um yeah hey guys welcome back to the channel my name is andrew the incarnations and in today's video we are going to be showcasing our massive manga haul collection of 2023 in february so if you like any of that then consider hitting the subscribe button we're actually almost reaching 800 uh, subscribers which is kind of insane and i'm also getting really close to hitting 1000 subscribers hopefully we can get to that goal by the end of the year so if you want to hit that subscribe button down below it really means a lot also if you enjoy the video be sure to smash the like button if you like the video and if you have any recommendations of whatever future video you want me to make then be sure to leave it down in the comments i read them all anyways without further ado let's get straight into it Start off by showcasing some manga by a mangaka known as Yuichi Yokoyama. Uh, he is a mangaka known for his unique art style. Um, it's definitely something you really don't see. Uh, this one over here I'm opening up is called, uh, I think it's the wrong way. I don't know it's the right way. It's called Burning Sounds. Um, I don't know. What to say it doesn't really have a description of what it's about but it's about burning object going about its uh its way but most of his work usually doesn't come with dialogue so you can pretty much pick up any edition and just enjoy the series uh, uh in this case in this instance it does have some dialogue but it's really minor you don't really need it per se to enjoy the series i think Another series we have by him is called Room. This is also a Japanese manga. Um, yeah, whoever sold this to me was really in interested and invested in his work. Uh, we also have more work by him called Baby Boom. I believe this is about like World War and stuff. Um, the art is pretty cute in this one. I, this is by far one of my favorite ones by him. Uh, just looking at the art, it looks like it has two contrasting colors, which makes for a very vibrant um, picture. And yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying his uh, art. It's definitely something really cute. Uh, there's also this big ass uh, manga. I don't, I'm not sure what this is called because it doesn't really have an English translation. This is humongous. This is either like picture box or color engineering in English, but I don't really know. Uh, looks like it has the same character from the Baby Boom. Um, I don't know if his mangas have like anything to like any like overlapping, but yeah, it's uh, this one is kind of cool looking. Definitely interesting, uh, interesting thing to add. Uh, and there's also other things over here that I have. So these ones are now in English. Uh, this one's called Bete Noir. Uh, it is a compilation of many different manga artists. But in this book, we also have some of Yuichi Yokoyama's work. Uh, this is a little short story. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you are a serious manga collector for uh if you're like a big fan of his work you might as well want to pick this thing up it's called bete noir uh yeah and uh we have another thing called i5 i believe by baltic comic um edition number 32 um this one also has a little short story of yushi yokoyama as you can see over here um yeah so if you're a serious manga collector as well, and you collect English editions, this is probably a one you want to pick up as well. Yeah. Um, we also have this thing called No Seven Prison, uh, 2012. Also another compilation of different and several notable manga uh, creators. Uh, you can see over here that we have a manga artist, we have different manga artists ranging from Yoshihiro Tatsume, Yoshihiro 
uh, Shuge, we have uh, people like uh, Shigeru Mizuki, uh, Kuriko Nanan, a lot of people, and of course, Yuichi Yokiyoma. Um, I believe this is his work. I'm not really familiar with what this is, but I think by the looks of it, this is uh, this stuff. These, this is something uh, different, I think, because it's using real people, uh, like human looking people, not like your usual uh, weird abstract stuff. It does have some like abstract monster creature over here, which I don't know. But yeah, if you're serious, a manga collector, if you're uh, if you like his work, you might as well want to pick this up. Uh, the person I bought this also had this big ass. Uh, I think this is a uh, a photo book of a bunch of his work in Japan. Um, yeah, maybe I want to bunch of his work in japan uh i don't know what's where this is located in but yeah this is some of his work um so yeah that is a bunch of yuichi yokoyama's work both some in english and some in japanese so let's move on to what as whatever else i got uh in this manga hall over here, we have a series called The Wallflower by Tomoko Hayakawa. Um, I got this for real cheap. I believe it was about $150 for this completes uh, for a bunch of these volumes. It was 26 volumes to be exact out of the 36. And if you guys don't know, this is extremely hard to find, especially for the later volumes. Um, some of them can be uh, costing about $100 each. And if you got a complete set in pretty good condition, uh, it can sell for upwards of $1,000, which is pretty insane for manga collecting. So yeah, uh, I got all this stuff. I don't know if I can showcase everything, but we have volumes one to uh, 40, uh, volumes one to 27. Uh, it's missing volume 26. So yeah, uh, I guess I'll speed run showcasing everything. Um, yeah, got volumes one to five. I'm not really a, much of a shoujo manga collector, so this is pretty. Uh, this will add to my shoujo collection quite a bit. Uh, I only really have other series like Kaze Hikaro, um, stuff like that. I believe the story is about a, a girl who's uh, who thinks she's not pretty or does unpretty things or like, I don't know. She's really self-conscious and then a bunch of guys try to win her over. You know, that type of stuff. It's like a reverse harem. Oh, that's not right. Anyways, let's just showcase it regardless of the numbering. I might trigger for a few of you, but I don't really care. Um, yeah, that is the wallflower. So let's move on to the next series we got over here. The next few series um, that's that are out of print I have are um, the first volume of Parasite, the premium edition in the Tokyo Pop edition. That's a mouthful to say. Um, this was actually the last volume I needed to complete my set of Parasite. So this is pretty cool. Uh, if you don't know, if, I don't know if I really stated this in the previous manga haul video, but a lot this manga edition uh, does uh, cut out a few things, a few scenes. One of which is when uh, Migi turns into a pee pee hand. Yeah, uh, yeah, a genitalia, male gen genitalia, and um, the manga itself is also flipped. And what else is? pretty interesting about this manga uh mickey is uh called lefty in this manga instead of instead of miggy because the manga is flipped so yeah i'm pretty stoked to have this in my collection uh if you're trying to get a complete set of uh 
Parasite Tokupop Premium Editions, they're gonna cost you about 200 Canadian. I saw one listing on eBay sold for around 160 Canadian plus shipping and taxes. So yeah, you, you can get pretty lucky getting the series. It is out of print. So I think based on what I, based on what I think it's probably gonna raise in price as more people are gonna be interested in collecting the series. But you know, that's just my opinion. So cop it while you can. Uh, the next set of things we have over here that's out of print. We have Genkatsu, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo, Volumes 1, 2, 3, Complete. This is an out of print series. Uh, I don't really know the pricing on this one. I'm guessing it's about $100 just to complete this set. Um, I'm not sure if this is really sought after, but it's based on a classical piece of literature. Uh, I, I have not read it, so yeah, but we have it and it's out of print so we'll add it to the collection the next series i have over here is something i was trying to complete it's a horror manga called arms of canon uh the the series over here you can see is uh sealed still factory sealed um and i have over here volumes four two nine in english of the arms of canon uh, you can't really find this online. There's not really any scanlations for the, especially for the later volumes of the series, because for some reason. But so the only re real uh, way to collect and read the series is by purchasing the physicals. So I'm not sure if I want to open up these manga books, but. Yeah, we got them. Uh, I'm still missing volume three to complete my set. I already had volumes one and two prior. But if you have a complete set of these, you're can, this is gonna cost you about 200 Canadian around that spectrum to complete the set. So these get pretty pricey if you wanna get this series. Next series, we got uh, something called Lycanthropy Dio by Kenshu Kaiji and art by Kenji Akamura. I don't know much about this series, but I do know it's out of print because it's by a uh, Viz graphic novel. I don't think they print those anymore. But the art looks pretty cool. It reminds me of like those old 90s art style, maybe like some Baki. Uh, you do get like a lot of like the adult facial features in manga in the past, but yeah, this is looks pretty hardcore it's a uh, looks like it's a martial arts manga i'm gonna have to do more research about this series but it's cool uh, i'm excited to read it see what my thoughts about it and yeah that is lycanthropy leo we have a series called sarai volume 8 um by majihiro shibata and this is a series published by comics one which is a now defunct publisher um, so this is in fact out of print. Uh, there is eight volumes in English. I believe this is discontinued. Uh, it was discontinued in English. I don't know why, but it was. And, uh, it's about a maid, uh, fighting. I think I haven't read it, but yeah, it's about a Sarai, the battle maid. And if that interests you, if you're a collector of print manga, you might want to cop this one. So yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to try to get more of the rest of the series later in the future. Next off, we have something most of you may be familiar with if you like the comedy anime or comedy manga. We have over here k -On Volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, I think this is complete for the series. There are additional other series like the the white paperback and the the green one there's also a loot crate edition for volume one but yeah this is kaon uh this is printed by yen press uh uh and these are pretty old i think these were uh, released in 2012 2013 that type of uh time uh the editions i have over here are pretty old and used um this is a four coma. Uh, if you don't know what a four coma is, it is when uh, 
manga is read like this or they're just made in tiny like squares and that's usually how most of the panelize the panels look like uh if i was compared to another series if you've got if you guys read toma chan is a girl uh which has an anime airing right now the manga has this set of like uh panel panels and it's uh, also a, a four coma but if you guys are looking for how much this costs me uh this actually cost me about five dollars a piece to acquire so twenty dollars in total but if you were trying to get a complete set you can be looking at a hundred dollars canadian just to acquire everything so it does get pretty pricey uh so i'm pretty excited to get all of this for really cheap so yeah that is kaon i'm just gonna try to get the rest of the series so we can get a complete set but yeah uh pretty cheap next set of series over here we have our by tokyo pop called chili samurai uh i don't know much about this series i pretty much just picked it up as well because it was a samurai related and you know i like my samurai type of stories and uh i think this is also this has been discontinued in english by tokyo pop uh when it was being published um I think there is nine or eight tank bomb volumes in Japanese. So we only have half of the releases in English, but yeah, th these are pretty easy to come by. I think on eBay, You're not going to be spending more than 40 bucks Canadian trying to complete the series. But yeah, we did also get this from the same uh, lot for five bucks. So that was pretty much a steal. Next series uh, is from a uh, more older uh, mangaka artist it's by the creator of i think pushman and several other series uh his name is yoshihiro tatsumi and i have over here uh is one of his works called fallen world words um yeah uh, a drifting life uh, known for drifting life and a bunch of other things pretty cool um i love collecting old um, manga works by uh uh i don't want to say ancient creators but yeah from like old old time artists and old time manga uh makers so i love revisiting the old and uh, the old times and old comics and they do have like pretty unique art styles something pretty different than what we see today. Nah, it's more of the traditional Japanese art style, I think. But yeah, that is uh, Fallen Words by Yoshihiro Tatsumi. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, next off is a series I've been trying to collect for some time. Uh, this one is pretty expensive to, to obtain in a full set and it's no other than Gunslinger Girl volumes. Uh, one and two of the omnibuses, but it compiles volumes one to six of the series. Uh, so if you're trying to complete a set of Gunsling, I do have the singles of Gunslinger Girl volumes one to four, I believe. Uh, I believe there's only volumes one to six released in the singles by ADV. And they're pretty easy to obtain. But if you're trying to get the Seven Seas releases, which I have over here right now, uh, the Omnibus versions, which is uh, compiled in five or six so volumes, then you're going to be looking at spending upwards of a couple hundred dollars just to get the uh, to complete the series. I think the later volumes are worth a couple hundred or and are the hardest to find. And so. Good luck getting that uh this one was also part of the lot that i got for five dollars a piece so yeah not bad considering it costs pretty expensive even for the earlier volumes so yeah excited to try to complete my set of gunslinger girl and yeah last but not least is a series most of you know uh, are trying to collect if you are a hardcore manga collector uh, this one is out of print it's by del rey i got this for five dollars and it is compiled in seven books or 10 volumes actually but it's uh no other than mushushi for five bucks for mushushi you gotta be kidding me bro um this one is in pretty uh used condition 
there is a sort of damage but if you guys don't know uh if you can check if you check uh ebay sell comps this manga can sell for about a hundred dollars average based on ebay sold listings so it's definitely hard to find if you get the all well, later volumes those can go for a pretty petty uh the whole series itself for just the 10 volumes can cost uh, upwards of a thousand dollars and sometimes rate uh, going up to the two thousand dollars for and uh, for some crazy people uh, i don't know who's buying those series but yeah this is a damn expensive series to collect uh, i'm so uh, lucky that i got my hands on this series for such a cheap price so yeah uh it's definitely a series and that i'm excited to have and add to the collection uh, so without further ado that is pretty much it for the out of print manga side of things uh so let's check out some uh, other things that we got all right so next off we have a set of series by uh pretty uh i think like a, a legend in the the gekika manga style art style i don't really know what that means i just searched it up in google and found out that he's a Gekka, gekika manga artist and he's a yeah that's pretty much but he makes a lot of samurai work um and yeah i think it's like he inspired people like uh people who made vagabond or uh he uh made the logo design for akira but he's uh but now he, I think he, he's now, he now died or he now passed away in, uh, I think 2021, 2022 ish. If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself, promise. Uh, but yeah, his, he is no other than Hiroshi Harada. Uh, over here, I have one of his works called Bloody Samurai. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think Gekika art style is just a bunch of like line work and just tradition. I don't know. I don't know really. You can search it up in Google if you want to find out. But yeah, yeah. I think some of his famous work is the the Seju something uh, Gaiden, uh, printed by Dark Horse, uh, compiled in three volumes. And those goes the and those volumes go for a pretty penny too. Uh, I think they can sell for like around three dollars, two hundred to three hundred dollars Canadian. Uh, Maybe less if you get really lucky, but I'm just basing off of eBay, uh, eBay sold listings. So yeah, this is a bloody stumps by him. Uh, pretty cool. Um, next off is another one of his works called Samurai Son of Death. Uh, this is in a comic book form. Um, yeah, it's a small little series printed in English. Um, Next one over here, we have a little, I don't know if you would call this like a manga, but it's like a comic graphic novel type of thing. And in the beginning, when you open up the, the series, you can see some of his works. Uh, he really has like some, uh, a pretty noticeable art style. A lot of like, uh, a lot of deep, uh, deep sketching and etching and a lot of shadows. Uh, it's really, cool uh i think the series inside of this uh this book inside of this book we have some of his work called uh two warriors printed in english uh and just by observing this series it's we can see that it's uh really action-packed a uh, really violent um really epic this manga also has other works from other creators um uh, i will not show but yeah this is some of hiroshi harada's work uh the next set of things i have over here is uh i think it's his art book but this is uh printed in japanese it does have some of his work uh i don't know if this is english i haven't opened it up yet but I did check on Amazon. I'm not sure if that's what it costs. But this series is like 200 bucks, give or take, uh, on Amazon. And uh, and yeah, it does have some of his work inside here. 
Um, so if you're a hardcore collector, I guess this is uh, something you want to pick up alongside uh, the other stuff I, I just showcased. So yeah, that is Hiroshi Harada. I also got this manga surprise thing. I don't know. I don't think it has some of his work, but yeah, it's another comic book. Uh, so let's move on to another set of things that I got. All right. So the next couple series I have, I'm going to be showcasing are a lot, a little about, a lot about, um, uh, growing up and, uh, knowing your body. So yeah, but thing we are going to be showcasing here is called a manga called what is obscenity and if you don't know what this is by the looks of it it is female genitalia personified into this little pink monster looking thing uh so yeah <laughs> um i think this is about this is like an autobiography about a someone i don't know who this is uh I've been wanting to get this series for some time because it looks pretty fun, uh, pretty down to earth. Um, let's read the back just so you guys know uh, what you're going to get from this series. It's, it says, uh, in July 2014, uh, Ruko Denshi's world came crashing down as a cavalry, a cavalry police entered her home, confiscating her artwork and arrested her for distribution of obscene materials. The, the obscene material in question, a 3D printer file of her manko, which is female genitalia, used to create the world's first pee-pee-shaped kayak. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I did not expect that. But yeah, this is gonna be a pretty fun, interesting read. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what much to say about that. So yeah, uh, the next set, the next series over here is pretty similar to that, but I think it's just more of a comedic take, less of an autobiography, and it's more fictional. But it's called Little Miss P, and this is not the female genitalia. This is uh, a period monster type of thing. Uh, it talks about and tells the story about. A girl with going through pu pu uh, puberty and uh, going through her period, and yeah, uh, and she, what she do? She basically talks to Miss P uh, about it, and yeah, they just go through a wondrous journey with each other. This is printed in Yen Press. Uh, I have over here three volumes of the series uh you can see over here um we it, it showcases the different days uh per volume is it's another day of uh her going through her period so it's kind of funny um uh, it's also printed by yen press and uh i think it's still ongoing series so if you want to collect this series uh it's still in print uh pretty expensive though it's like 1950 canadian per volume but yeah that is little miss p some interesting series indeed okay moving on i have a set of series that are not in english but in a foreign uh, language but so let's showcase some of them uh some of the the first series i have over here is uh some stuff printed by uh created by what's their name sakabashira imiri uh sakabashira imiri uh some of their works are these are some of the works and it's pretty interesting um i think this is more or less like a picture book and like a uh just a book showcasing all of their works uh, it looks like a collage of just a, a bunch of different uh, uh popular uh japanese um characters put into tokyo uh whatever like, and it's kind of weird wild crazy uh yeah i don't know much to say about it some like the art style is something i like i'm not sure i'm gonna be keeping this in my collection though but yeah that is uh in uh sakabashira imiri here's another one this is also uh i think this is a manga by him but yeah it does have that weird art style 
Uh, this is a. Uh, yeah, this is a printed in Japanese. So yeah, that's a little introduction to Emiri Sakabashira. Uh, next off is a uh, by a popular Subaki shoujo a mangaka and a popular like Araguro uh, in the Araguro world, which is uh, basically erotica but with gore. So if you don't like that, uh, you probably you've been warned. Uh, don't progress any further if you don't like gore and uh, and that type of stuff. But um, we have over here a series called um, I don't know. But it's by Suhiro Maru. Uh, I pr probably butchered his name. Uh, I pro I'm not good at pronouncing uh, Japanese names, but uh, this is printed by Ser uh, Serindo Comics, and uh, and yeah, it's by the the a really popular horror manga artist, and some of his work is pretty um, grotesque, a pretty um, out there. Um, it's really scary looking. Um, if you, I'm not sure if I can showcase some of this stuff, but if you uh, if you like horror manga, you probably want to pick it up. Over here, you can see uh, a character taking shit. Uh, that's that's not something I I want to showcase. Uh, that is uh, pretty extreme. Uh, hopefully this video does get demonetized. I hope so, but yeah um, Don't know much much to say about this uh, Suhiro Maro uh, You're you're an interesting fella for creating some of these works. So yeah uh, That's something next off we have I'm not sure if I can show that either is a, a French manga uh, printed by Le Lazade Noir uh, by Makoto Aida, and it's called Mutant Hanako. Uh, let's put it over here. I'm not gonna show. I'm not gonna showcase the back cover. Uh, it's pretty colorful. Uh, it does have some uh, nudity and uh, a lot of like weird things that happen. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this for a younger audience, but it's. Uh, I think it does showcase some like popular and uh, anime characters like uh, Sailor Moon. I'm not sure what that has to do with it, anything, but it's, it's pretty explicit. Uh, what it showcases. Uh, I wish I could understand. I wish I could read uh, French so I could translate what I'm seeing. But by the looks of it, it's it's wild. Um, it's colored, um, and yeah, I'm not showcasing that. But yeah. Mutant Hanako, pretty interesting. Next off we have over here is a, a bilingual manga uh, called, let's see what it's called, Library and I'm With My Saint. Uh, this is uh, a two part series. I think it's printed in Chinese and English. So yeah, uh, I don't know much about this, but we got it in, in this lot, so. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, next off is uh, another French manga. I think this is manga, or it's not a manga. It's also by Le Lezadoir, uh called Chivari by Maki Sasaki. Um, yeah. Uh, pretty interesting work. Uh, again, probably not gonna keep this one, but I thought I'd showcase it in this video. So yeah, that is uh, uh, Chivari, um, Bari, Charari, Bari. I don't know what to say. Next up, we have a series called Spaceship E uh, by Takano Aya. Uh, this one looks like it's an alien. I don't know. <laughs> Japanese monkey artists are weird. Uh, it looks so odd. Uh, I don't know. It's I can't read it. I can't even read the back, so I couldn't even really tell you what's about. But I did check it up online, it's selling for a pretty good price. So yeah, make some money on this. Not bad. Next off, we have a series called uh, a set of works by popular mangaka, uh, horror mangaka 
call uh, by the name of Shintaro Kago. Over here we have some of his work called Super Dimensional Love Gun. Uh, this is still sealed. This is printed by and published by Denpa Books. So yeah. Uh, we also have Day of the Flying Head uh, printed by Hollow Press in this beautiful uh, looking book. Uh, oh yeah, do be warned that this uh, the front cover is kind of gory, so if you don't want to look at it, then don't watch the video. But if you guys are a little feeling a little adventurous, here you go. Uh, he also is uh, known for his uh, gory type of art style. I think this one's about uh, people where uh, where uh, people like experiencing a phenomenon where their head pops off. Uh, that's pretty random. I don't know. Uh, next one is called Tracked uh, by them. Uh, this one is in color. I'm not going to open it up, but yeah, that's Shintaro Kago track. And another last work by them is uh, Day of the Flying Head, but this is in their single issues. Uh, this was actually printed uh, by Hollow Press in single issues for four volumes. And then later on, they compiled all the four of the volumes into one big, uh, nice, beautiful soft cover. So yeah, if you collect, uh, and the singles do cost pretty penny. So yeah, um, last uh, set of things we have over here, uh, another like horror manga artist. Uh, we have stuff from uh, Hollow Press by someone named Daisuke Ichiba. Uh, uh, I don't think I can showcase some of this work either, but yeah, uh, it's the life of Namazuko, and we have over here Hospital Train. Um, pretty interesting. These are big hard cap backs, so they're kind of nice looking. Uh, they're really huge too. And yeah, um, that's pretty much it for uh, this set. So let's move on to the next couple series we got left. All right, so the next set of things are just going to be a bunch of random things that I picked up uh, for cheap. Uh, this one, first off, we're going to have showcase our Blam or Blame, the Electrophist Escape uh, based off the animated film. So yeah, that is Blam. Uh, next off, we have uh, <coughs> Pez by Hiroyuki Asada, printed by Denpa Books. This is by the same mangaka of uh, Tagami Bachi, or also known as Letter B. So yeah, this is a little like color book. It's a cool little uh, manga comic type of thing. Uh, yeah, it's pretty thin and thin in uh, size and small in size as well. Uh, next off, we have a series called Planet S by the famous Makoto Yukimura who's also famous for his work with Vinland Saga, one of my favorite mangas of all time. Uh, this is one of his first series printed by Dark Horse Books. These are the omnibuses. It also has the single editions printed in five books by Tokyopop. So yeah, those are kind of harder to find, but these are, I think these are superior editions. And also they have really good paper quality. So if that's something you like, uh, yeah, pick it up. Next off, we have a manga called uh, Magician A by Natsuko Ishisuyo. Uh, looks like it's printed by BDP, uh, whatever that is, publisher. Uh, looks like a horror manga as well. So that's pretty cool to have uh, in the collection now. Next off, we have uh, by, uh, a series by uh, uh, a veteran manga creator. Uh, Non, uh, Shigeru Mizuki and the manga is called Nonomba uh, Nonon, Nonomba uh, not sure what it's about looks pretty cool too printed by D plus Q uh, uh, critically acclaimed Gekika artist as well I, I really don't know what Gekika means but yeah uh, it says on the back it's a Gekika manga artist so yeah I'm running out of battery so that's why I'm probably moving quickly through this stuff next off we have a uh, dream fossil uh, 
so, uh, Satoshi Kon's dream fossil. Uh, if you don't know who Satoshi Kon, he's a famous uh, director slash manga creator or whatever. Uh, he's really famous for his series called a uh, movie called Perfect Blue, which is a phenomenal uh, movie, uh, anime movie, film. Um, and this is supposedly a bunch of, a collection of his stories all in one printed by uh, published by vertical uh, books so yeah um, excited to add this to the collection um, next off we have this series called Lishi Light Club looks like it's a, a religion style manga and looks like a horror series uh, by Usamaru for for Yuya uh, this is printed by vertical uh, this is definitely for a older audience so excited to see what it's about uh also so yeah next off we have over here uh velveteen mandala also printed by vertical looks like also uh a horror manga for adult audience i think this has a lot of gore inside of it so yeah uh pretty cool uh next off we have ichi f a worker's graphic memoir of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. I already own a similar series called F Arata. Uh, I bought it like a, a while back, maybe like December. Um, but it's uh, supposedly about the story of the disaster that happened in uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant. Uh, 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 and it, it basically tells the story of someone that uh, went, uh, experienced uh, what happened firsthand. I think they were like a worker. So this is basically an autobiography type of thing. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty uh, interesting. I really like history stuff. So this is something definitely for me. Uh, I'm gonna be excited reading this in the future. Uh, next up, we have a series called Ryuko by Eldo Yoshimizu, printed by Titan Comics. I think this is the complete series, uh, volumes one and two. It's an action crime manga. So, so yeah, pretty cool. Next off, we have some cat mangas. From, if you guys like cat stuff, uh, we have um, What's Up Michael, printed in these big Dark Horse Omnibuses. Um, this is, I think this is the complete series. It is missing a few things. If you guys don't know, What's Michael was a, as a, uh, manga comic series published in like these single issues back in the late, whatever, like the late nineties, uh, or, or I don't know, like early nineties, but, uh, 1900s, I think. But yeah, it's about a cat, uh, almost like Garfield. Uh, he's a tabby cat, orange tabby cat, and uh, it just it's a bunch of short stories, a bunch of like gag type of stuff following the the cat named Michael, and that's it's cool. Uh, next up, we have uh, a series that's another uh, cat manga called Little Leo by uh, Moto Haigo, and this is also printed by Dempa Books. I gotta say, Dempa Books is killing the game when publishing manga, cause this, this is high quality for a uh, fifteen fifty nine manga. It also has like a little uh, art when you open the book, and yeah, it's a it's another a cat manga where which seems uh, the cat can talk. Uh, and yeah, I, I like cat stuffs. If you don't know, so yeah, it's gonna be pretty interesting to add to the collection. Uh, next off, we have this series. I don't know what it is. Uh, I think this is also a compilation of different manga artists called USCA English Edition. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, it's sealed in this plastic. And over here, you can see the, the list of different manga artists pr uh, printed on the back of the book. Uh, looks like it's printed, uh, made by Dairam Books 2016 and printed in Japan. So yeah. Uh, that is the USCA. Next off, I think these are a bunch of India. Uh, this was published in India by India Indian publish publisher. Uh, you can also see that it says Comics India 
uh, I don't know, and the series is called Comics for the uh, for Adults or for ED. And it has a bunch of different manga uh, artists. Uh, so yeah, that's also another nice addition. Um, next up we have series also has a bunch of different manga artists uh, co uh, compiled into one book. Uh, this is a two, uh, two series, I think. So yeah, I think this is complete. Uh, it's called Pop Kami. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, next up, we have a set of series um, that are out of print uh, that I didn't show uh, in my other like in the other section, but I thought I'd show in the on its own individually. Uh, it's it's pulp manga printed by Viz Media. Uh, this is a discontinued edition by Viz Media. I don't know why they, I think they they intended to make this for like the more mature audience. So they decided to branch off into a, a branch off and make this pulp manga lineup. Uh, I think it's now uh, newly made into a Viz Signature. I think that's more like the adult centered uh, comics for Viz Media now. But yeah, this is pulp manga. Uh, you can see at the top over here, the logo, um, that it has this little pulp logo. That's how you can really identify if you have a pulp manga. They come in this, they usually are the same size and same width and thickness. But yeah, um, over here we have series like Bukuni Young. Uh, we got over here, uh, Arichi Blood by uh, Kazuzu, Kazuzu uh, Uzumez, who also has a series uh, called The Drifting Classroom, and uh, I have the series as well. Um, we have over here some uh, Hideo Yamanoto uh, work called Voyager. Uh, this is Voyager Inc. And we have the other stuff called uh, Voyager, uh, no, that is Voyager, and this is Voyager Inc. Volumes 1, uh, 2, and 3. Uh, this is also a famous horror mangaka. Um, I don't, this is my first time owning some of his series. But uh, if you guys don't know, uh, pulp manga can cost a pretty penny, especially some of these editions. I think the Voyager mangas alone can cost upwards of like $200, which is kind of crazy. And the Richie Blood, I think, is like at least 50 to 100 bucks. So yeah, um, pulp manga. Uh, excited to have these to add these to the collection but yeah that's pretty much it let's move on to the last set of things that we got in this manga haul all right so the next the last few things we have over here i just want to showcase first uh i forgot to showcase some of the other things but we have isle of the dogs um this is based off the movie i think or maybe the manga was created first uh, but yeah, we have it. Uh, I think it's a stop motion film. I like the movie. I, I don't think I finished watching it, but yeah, that's Isle of the Dogs. If you watched the movie, let me know your thoughts. They basically sent a bunch of uh, dogs uh, onto an island because I think they were like a rabbit or something. Something, something weird. Um, yeah, they basically just send dogs onto an island because why not? The video got cut off, but we, right over here we have an art book. It's created by uh, a mangaka by the name of Renge Morada. And this thing is called Future Log. Uh, it's printed by Dempa Books. And it is a hefty size book. Uh, this is like, I, I don't know how what's the size, but it's, it's this size. Uh, here's my hands for size comparison. I can put my three hands uh, sideways and that will uh, that'll be more than enough to fit the book. Um, uh, it's it's interesting. The the paper quality is really good. Um, the illustrations are top notch. Uh, I think the the creator is kind of like a lollicon. Uh, and if you don't know what that means, he uh, he's really uh, fascinated for like you know little girls uh, who, who draws in a cutesy art style uh there's some nudity and there's some like uh, mature um uh, pictures inside of this uh book but overall the art is really good uh he has a really nice way of making uh, anime characters 
in a, in a real life setting look realistic in a sense. Uh, I don't know, I'm not saying it's, it's uh, realistic, but it makes it seem like uh, these characters live in our, our own world. Uh, it's really good. Um, here's some other characters. Uh, yeah, just uh, really good stuff. He also has a fascination for uh, uh, automobiles and um, stuff like that. But yeah, um, I think that's Akira. I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, a really high quality uh, art book. Uh, I think this costs about $65 retails. This art book is pretty expensive. But yeah, that is a little introduction to Renge Murata. This is actually, I think, the only uh, art book in this manga haul. So let's move on to whatever we have next. Uh, next off, we have a couple illustration. Uh, next up, we have a couple uh, mangas here too. Uh, uh, these are from uh, Pontimon, uh, Fanfare Pontimon. Uh, we have over here uh, Blue by Kiriko Nananan. Uh, I think this is a uh, older mangaka. They are like, these are like, uh, uh, these are um, older authors. I, I don't really know who they are, but yeah, uh, looks like their art style is pretty simplistic. Um, pretty, uh, yeah, really basic, but yeah, that is them. Uh, don't know much about it, but we have it. Uh, and over here, we have another uh, manga by Pontimon. Uh, it's Hideo Azuma, Disappearance Diary. This one looks more of a older series too. Um, you can see that it has like that, you know, that old comic-esque uh, gag manga type of art style. Um, this was printed in Spain. Yeah. Um, Looks like he he won multiple awards making this manga as well. So yeah, that is uh, I think that's the rest of the manga we have uh, for the random miscellaneous manga. Uh, next up, I'm going to showcase uh, a couple, not really manga, but a couple uh, Japanese co kind of comics. Uh, we have this thing here. Uh, I don't know what this is. Um, this is, is by Hayakawa, Hayakawa, and this, it looks to be like a little, uh, little comic. Uh, it looks like at the back here, it's printed by inanbooks.com. Uh, and if it, I don't really know who that is, and it has, uh, 150 editions printed. So yeah, uh, interesting. It's by Motohiro Hayakawa. Uh, looks like that is printed in Germany because it says uh, Inin Zurich and it's uh, Motohiro Hayakawa's Mutant. So yeah, that's uh, that's something there if you're interested in seeing that. Um, we also have this little thing by Koyoma uh, Press. Uh, it's a little, little uh, picture book of an artist by the name of I don't think this is a manga, but it's by the uh, artist by the name of Jeanette Lapalm. Uh, it's kind of cute. Uh, if you can see right over here, you can see that there is a little art, a um, little like a uh, little um, doodles, I think. But yeah, that's a little cool thing we have over here. Uh, we also have this uh, looks like a horror thing printed by Hollow Press. It's uh, I'm not sure if I can showcase what's ever is inside here but it looks like a limited edition 350 print and it's also signed uh you can see over here it's a little grotesque and a little gory but yeah uh we have it as well uh these are not really manga but we're going to showcase it anyways we also have this uh tokyo man tokyo salary stamp type of uh little comic thing here um yeah um this was uh made by a guy named uh, Natsuko Oshima. And then also we have one of this last uh, weird uh, 
our little comic type of things. We have uh, Tetsunori Taoyawa. Uh, what is this? Virulent Vessels of Vesicating Vices. And uh, created by Henry Dumas. And it's just a bunch of weird, obscure lines. Uh, just a bunch of art. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Uh, also, so this is going to be probably the last, I think this is the last set of manga I'm going to be showcasing. To end this video off, we have one set of series by uh, Mangaka that is has now been deceased since I think, I believe 2016, 2015, or that, around that time range. Uh, he's he's, uh, he's uh, really popular in uh, France. He's uh, made countless manga. I think he has an animated series uh, 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 released on F Netflix in around the 2020, 2021 uh, range. It's called Summit of the Gods. And if you don't know who I'm talking about by now, his name is Jiro Taniguchi. And speaking of Summits of the Gods, we have it over here uh, printed in, printed by uh, Pontimon, Van Vader Pontimon. We have volumes one, two, five, and it's complete. And this story is about uh, a man who uh, wants to climb Mount Everest. It's uh, it's not based on a true story. It's just fiction. Uh, but yeah, I have re yet to read it or I will watch the animated film. The covers are really nice. Uh, but yeah, that is that. Uh, opening up Summits of the Gods, we can see. I take a look at his little art style. It's a, uh, it's really a, uh, he has, uh, when, once we were showcasing his little art, uh, you can tell that uh, he has a distinct art style. Almost like, I don't know, it, it gives you the same type of vibe of Nyoki or Sawa. But yeah, but they, they're completely different uh, manga artists. So yeah, that's Summits of the God. Uh, really looking forward to read that we also have several other uh, uh, several other things of his works uh over here we have uh, a distant neighborhood volumes one and two um there i believe all of these are printed by most of these are printed by pontimon so yeah um these ones are the singles there is a hardcover edition uh, that they just released, but yeah, I think these are kind of out of print um, But yeah, just looking at it. We can see that his art is has a pretty common uh, It's pretty uh, distinct And yeah, this one is about I think it says here on the back reliving your past so Yeah, pretty cool Really looking forward. These things are pretty expensive as well. They're like 23 US dollars. So probably like around less than $30 to get retail uh, Canadian. Uh, next off, we have another one of his works called The Quest of the Missing Girl. Um, I think this is a solo series. A lot of his works are pretty uh, short. Um, so yeah, just uh, keep in mind about that. But here is some more of his works. So yeah, that is uh, the quest of the missing girl. This one's about um, the mountains are unforgiving about the city and this treacherous. Shiga comes down from the mountain refuge to look for a missing niece, Megumi. Bali finds his trouble. So it looks like it's kind of like a mystery type of manga a lot of his mangas have different stories so we can have like a, lo uh, a lot of like adventurous mountain climbing type of stuff or we can have like a lot of mystery over here the next one we have uh is the times of bot chan uh these are volumes three and four the person who sold it to me only had those ones they didn't have one and two but there is i believe only four volumes printed in english um there's also several other uh, mangas in Japanese, but I don't think it 
received uh, was received well uh, when they were publishing it. So they had to uh, ax, uh, not they uh, Pontimon decided to not publish anymore. I don't know why. I, I'm just assuming that's why. But uh, I think there is ten volumes in total. But yeah, this one's uh, about uh, Japan in the Meiji period. Me Meiji period. Um, I think it has to do with a lot with uh, war. Uh, I'm not really sure, but yeah, it looks like it's it gives me that type of vibe. Um, so yeah, that is uh, the times of Bot Chan. Next off, we have kind of like a Western. It's called Skyhawk. Um, there's not really a description on the back, but this is by far one of my favorite looking covers. Uh, it's really, I really like the blue. It really makes it pop out, makes it really nice on the shelf too. Um, yeah, that's uh, Skyhawk. Uh, next off, we have this is one of the the only series he has in a uh, printed by Viz Media, I think. One of the few, uh, or uh, not Viz Media, CPM, or uh, I don't know what it stands for, but CPM Manga. I'm now defunct publisher, which means this is out of print. I don't think this is that hard to find though. Uh, it's called Samurai Legend. It's uh, one of the few samurai mangas he's made in Eng uh, printed in English. So yeah, it's pretty cool. And then last but not least, the last series I have by Jiro Taniguchi is, is this beautiful, uh, actually no, there's actually a few more, but we have an another one by Pontimon uh, called A Zoo in Winter. It's a hardback. Um, this is really nice. Pontimon really did justice for his work. It's this beautiful, uh, huge, uh, oversized manga. And the quality is really, really great. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I really, even, uh, even though I haven't started reading any of his works, it's, uh, it's definitely great, uh, good, um, it's definitely uh, admirable art. His art is really nice. I really like the background panels too. Um, yeah, I've had to do, I've yet to do a review on him though. Um, so yeah, and uh, I think this one is a compilation of many of his different work, uh, many different works of different manga artists, but it also has uh, Jiro Taniguchi's work at the bottom. Uh, you can see his name over here. I'm not sure you can see in the camera, but yeah, his name's over there. And it's called Japan. Um, it basically just celebrates a, diff a bunch of different uh, uh, Japanese manga artists. Over here, we have different people like uh, Jiuji Hanaguchi, Tayo, Matsumoto, uh, Moyoko, uh, Moyoko Ano, and several other different uh, manga artists. I think there's also a bunch of French manga artists too. So yeah. Um, yeah, let's see if we can find any of his works in, uh, in this manga. It should be at the somewhere in the beginning. So yeah, here is uh, his work inside of this manga. Over when just opening up, you can really tell it's Jiro Taniguchi's work. It's a short story. Uh, I think it's called Summer Sky. Yeah, we can have. But that's pretty much it for Jiro Taniguchi's work. Here's just a little, uh, I guess, let's just showcase everything all at once. Um, just in one nice picture. Maybe I use this as a, a thumbnail. I don't know. Yeah, that's Jiro Taniguchi's work. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the manga haul. Uh, if you, I'm gonna move on to the screen where you can see my face and everything. So, all right, so that's pretty much it for the manga haul. As you can see, there's many different works I have on the screen or uh, over here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button down below. I, I do have plans of making more manga related content, hopefully more reviews. Hopefully I'm gonna like talk more about uh, the series. Hope to do so, uh, less manga hauls, more other things. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button down below. Be sure to turn on post notifications if you 
uh, you want to see more of my content. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope to see you guys in a new video. And stay, uh, stay safe. You're awesome. Bye-bye.